Okay, grade sixes, welcome back to Stray. Um, and today we're going to be looking at the um, assignments attached to the story. I'm not quite sure how, how you have them packaged together, but mine are right at the bottom um, of the last page of the story, as you can see on the left here. So um, this one here, the first one, is just some very basic um, elements of a story. So the first one here is plot. Um, so I've got a graph here on the right that kind of um, illustrates um, what that looks like. Um, so plot, just very basically, um, is the events of the rising action. So what happens um, between the setting, which is our next one, and the resolution, which is the, the end of end of the um, story. And you might hear it sometimes said as denouement, which is comes from the French word for unknot. So it basically just means the unraveling, uh, when everything's made clear, um, end of the story, the conclusion. Okay, so if we look at plot, so we're looking at everything between the uh, setting and the conflict. Um, so if you've watched the last videos that I put out, that should be fairly obvious. Um, just very basically, um, the plot here, um, there's, you know what, I decided I'm just going to type it out um, while the recording's paused so and I don't waste all my time here. So just very briefly, um, Doris finds a dog, the dog lives in the house for a while, it behaves well while it's there, and Doris befriends it. And then that's everything between um, the beginning of the story and the conflict. So very simple, that's what that is. Uh, next is setting. Um, so we can go right to the story for this bit. Um, so setting is basically we're looking where uh, and when uh, the story happens. So January, as we mentioned in the other videos, January is predicted critical, excuse my um, poor highlighting, I'm doing this on a laptop with a touchpad. Um, settings, sometimes you also want to look at characters, so um, Mr. Amos, Lacey, Mamie, Doris, and of course the puppy, okay? Um, now, there's no uh, specific city um, or uh, place mentioned, um, so you could just say um, the Lacey's home uh, maybe would be the main part of the setting. So just very briefly, I've typed them out again, um, just all the details that I just mentioned. Um, obviously, you would make it look a lot nicer than me, um, but I'm just putting it like this just for the purposes of recording, okay? Um, so the next one is um, complications, and I actually really dislike that. Um, I think you could just look at this as conflict, okay? Um, in fact, I'm going to change that right now. Okay, so there we are. I've changed it to conflict um, because that's the word that you're going to see uh, most often in any other English setting. Um, and I've also filled in, I, I actually think there's two possible conflicts on this story that you could look at, depending on um, what themes you identified or what you pulled out of the story, again, based on the other videos that I put out. Um, the, the most obvious conflict is that Mr. Lacey wants to return the dog, okay? So we have uh, Doris wanting to keep it and Mr. Lacey wanting to return it. Um, a little bit deeper, I think, um, a th the thematic conflict is that they're too poor to have a dog. So the real enemy here is their economic situation rather than Doris versus um, Mr. Lacey. And in as you get further into your educational career, um, you're going to see that Mr. Lacey wanting to return the dog is a, is a man versus man conflict. It's Doris versus Mr. Lacey. Uh, in, in this case, it's going to be a, a man versus environment or a man versus society um, because it's uh, the situation that Doris is in, really. That is the conflict. And the next, these next two here, um, protagonist and antagonist. So I first want to um, define these words. Um, both of them come from uh, ancient Greece. Um, the, the middle part here, um, let me do my highlighter, agon. So in ancient Greece, that means conflict. So your protagonist and your antagonist revolve around the central conflict of the story. They oppose each other. Um, and I want to be really clear here. Um, Sometimes you'll see protagonist is the good guy and antagonist is the bad guy, um, but that's quite simply it's just not true and it's not helpful to look at it that way. It's not going to help your learning. Um, one uh, kind of current example that I like to think of about this, um, actually, you know what, let's pause it here and then I'm going to make a part two for this assignment, okay? So um, we'll end this video here and then we'll come back to the next part, okay? So maybe Maybe you could work ahead and see if you can figure it out based on the definitions that I've outlined. Uh, and then in part two, we will get back to it, okay?